Hello everyone. In this video, we're gonna be comparing all the congenital hyperbilirubinemias, which include Gilbert, Crigler-Najjar, Dubin-Johnson, and Rotor syndrome. So let's start. So first of all, we are going to look at the physiology. We're gonna see where the unconjugated bilirubin comes from and how it is conjugated. So you must be knowing that in the RBCs we have hemoglobin. Now this hemoglobin is broken into two things: the globin chain and the heme. Now this globin part of the hemoglobin can be further broken into amino acids. These amino acids can then be recycled. Now what happens to this heme? Now this heme is converted into biliverdin with the help of an enzyme called as heme oxygenase. And further this biliverdin is converted into unconjugated bilirubin by biliverdin reductase. So this is the basic physiology. Now this breaking of hemoglobin into unconjugated bilirubin doesn't just happen anywhere it mainly occurs in the reticuloendothelial cells now this unconjugated bilirubin has to be transported to the liver cells to get conjugated but this unconjugated bilirubin is lipid soluble and cannot be dissolved in blood so here is where albumin comes in Albumin comes and binds to unconjugated bilirubin which helps to transport the unconjugated bilirubin to the liver cells. Now let's say that this unconjugated bilirubin has finally arrived to the liver cells. This unconjugated bilirubin will be taken in and the albumin will be left out. After this the unconjugated bilirubin will be converted to conjugated bilirubin with the help of UGT1A1 or UGT. Now let's compare all the four syndromes. I have already made a video on all of these four syndromes where I talk more in detail about the symptoms about the diagnosis so I highly highly recommend that you go and check that out because this video is just a small summary of it so if there is a mutation in the UGT1A1 it will lead to Gilbert syndrome a more severe form of this where again UGT1A1 is affected is the Crigler-Najjar syndrome Crigler-Najjar syndrome is divided into type 1 and type 2 where the type 1 is more severe than the type 2 now there is a protein channel by the name of OATP1B1 if there is a defect in this protein channel there will be rotor syndrome and there is another channel by the name of MRP2 if there is a defect in this scene the person is going to have Dubin Johnson syndrome so this is a very quick summary on all of these four syndromes Now these four syndromes can be divided on the basis of what is increased. So there are two syndromes where unconjugated bilirubin is increased and in the other two conjugated bilirubin is increased. So in Gilbert syndrome and both the Crigler-Najjar syndromes there is an increase in unconjugated bilirubin. But in Dubin-Johnson syndrome and Rotor syndrome conjugated bilirubin is increased. Now very quickly I'm going to go through a few very important clinical features which are seen in all of these conditions but again to get the whole picture make sure to check the previous videos out so let's discuss these syndromes so out of the three least severe jaundice is seen in gilbert syndrome because around 30% of enzymes are still working here the clinical features are seen mostly in adults and after a stressful event like drinking alcohol or getting some illness neurological features are not seen here and this disease mostly goes undetected and a specific treatment is not usually required now crigler najjar syndrome type 2 is more severe as compared to gilbert syndrome because here there are less than 10% enzymes that are working clinical features are usually seen in neonates or in children but here also neurological features are usually not seen and if we will give phenobarbitone the response will be seen what do i mean by this so phenobarbitone is an enzyme inducer so if we will give this the levels of ugt1a1 will increase and after this the unconjugated bilirubin will be able to convert to conjugated bilirubin and hence improve the patient's condition now finally in this the most severe jaundice is seen because here almost no enzymes are working Clinical features are usually seen in neonates in the first few days itself. Neurological features are seen in this condition and most of the times even after giving phenobarbitone no response is seen and so liver transplant is required. Now let's see Dubin Johnson syndrome and Rotor syndrome. So in Dubin Johnson syndrome as we just saw MRP2 protein channel is defective. Brome sulfonylurea test is negative and on oral cholecystography gallbladder is not visualized. 
again to really understand both of these points do go and check the previous videos out here the porphyrin values are normal but black liver is seen this is a very important point now in rotor syndrome the OATP1B1 protein channel is defective the brom sulfalin test is positive and on oral cholecystography the gallbladder is visualized here the coproporphyrin values are high but black liver is not seen it is normal now let's try to make a flow chart which is really really going to help you solve questions. So whenever you're approaching a question like this, first see what is increased. Is it unconjugated bilirubin or conjugated bilirubin? If unconjugated bilirubin is increased, think in terms of Gilbert syndrome and krigler najjar syndrome. If conjugated bilirubin is increased, think in terms of Rotor syndrome and Dubin-Johnson syndrome. Now, if the question is about Gilbert syndrome, it is going to mention something like jaundice seen after a stressful event. Now, the stressful event can be smoking, can be heavy exercise, can be illness, drinking alcohol, etc. But if nothing as such is mentioned, then we have to look at other things. If the question mentions that the patient is either a child or an infant and after giving phenobarbitone, the patient's condition improved, then think in terms of krigler najjar syndrome type 2. But if there are points such as jaundice on the day zero or no response to phenobarbitone seen or neurological features seen if such points are mentioned then think in terms of krigler najjar syndrome type 1 if the question mentions that the brom sulfurin test is positive or gallbladder is visualized on oral cholecystography then think in terms of rotor syndrome but if the question says opposite of this or it says that the liver is black in color then definitely definitely think in terms of Dubin Johnson syndrome. Now to get a good grasp on this topic, let's practice a few questions. You can pause and try to solve it yourself first. A 20 year old male patient presents with intermittent episodes of yellowing of the skin and sclera. He reports that these episodes tend to occur during periods of stress, fasting or illnesses and resolve spontaneously. Physical examination and lab tests reveal unconjugated hyperbilirubinemia. Which condition is most likely responsible for his symptoms? So first of all, let's see what is increased. Here we can clearly see that unconjugated bilirubin is increased. We can also see that the symptoms appear after stress, fasting or illnesses. Both of these point towards the diagnosis of Gilbert syndrome. So hence our correct option is option A. Now a 35 year old patient presents with abdominal discomfort and hepatomegaly. Liver function tests reveal elevated levels of conjugated bilirubin and liver biopsy shows black liver. What is the most likely diagnosis? So a very very easy diagnosis but let's go step by step. So conjugated bilirubin is increased and black liver is there. Both of these definitely point towards the diagnosis of Dubin Johnson syndrome. Now, a newborn infant is brought to the pediatrician with severe jaundice within the first few days of life. The infant appears very ill and lab tests show extremely high levels of unconjugated bilirubin. There is no response to phenobarbitone therapy. What is the treatment of choice? So here first we will have to make a diagnosis. So unconjugated bilirubin is increased. So it is either Gilbert or krigler najjar But as we can see that the patient is newborn, which is mostly seen in krigler najjar syndrome and also no response to phenobarbitone therapy is seen. So it is more specifically krigler najjar syndrome type 1. And so the treatment of choice in this condition is liver transplantation. Now our final question of the day. A 30 year old male patient presents with recurrent episodes of painless jaundice and right upper abdominal discomfort. He undergoes bromsulfalin test which reveals that dye is rapidly taken up by the liver and excreted in bile. Lab tests show elevated levels of conjugated bilirubin. There is no evidence of gallstones and liver biopsy does not show black pigment associated with another syndrome. What is the pathophysiological basis of this disease? So what is the disease that is being talked about? So conjugated bilirubin is increased, right? So it is either Rotor syndrome or Dubin-Johnson syndrome. But here the bromsulfalin test is positive. By positive here, I mean that the dye is taken up by the liver and is excreted in the bile. Also, the liver is not black and it is normal. So all of these point towards a diagnosis of Rotor syndrome. And as we just studied, in Rotor syndrome, we see OATP1B1 mutation. So option B is our correct answer.
that's it for this video. If you have any doubts, so please leave them in the comments or you can message me on Instagram anytime. The link to my Instagram is in the description. Thank you.